Hello there, everybody. How you doing? It's me, your boy, Axel Waddle here. Welcome back to the Minecraft Guide, episode number 28. Today, Mending Villager. That's gonna happen by the end of the episode, which means we'll be able to get mending on all of our netherite armor, our netherite sword, almost a pickaxe, and every other tool, whenever we need it. We'll be able to hopefully, definitely, maybe, at least be able to buy a couple books of mending in today's episode. But first, we need a Mending Villager. So, in the last episode, we cured a zombie villager. The villager is doing great. First things first, before before we do anything with villagers, we actually need to make a house for the villager. This is the start of that villager's house. We also talked about this a tiny bit in the last episode. Now, uh, let's work on the interior. I'm thinking of something crazy for the floor. This is something that I actually, I don't, I don't think I've ever done before with stripped logs, but I've seen it done a lot and I really, really like it. So what we're gonna do is create a crazy, crazy floor. I mean, look at all of this movement. This is literally absurd right here, but uh, that, that's too busy. So this is what we do we strip it all and then I think it's gonna look good maybe I don't I don't know oh, one short really okay <laughs> that would happen okay anyways we strip it all what do we think mm hmm mm hmm I'm not sure. I, I don't know what I think. We're going to leave it for now, though. Next up, we need to do the outside of the build. Now, am I speedrunning the build intentionally today? No, 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 not at all. But am I excited to get a mending villager? Uh, yes, 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 definitely. But I'm making one crucial big slip up right here, right at the beginning. So usually we use stripped dark oak logs for the outside of our build. You know, like right there. We did it on that build. This time I want to switch it up. So, uh, so far, uh, the builds all look similar. The, the two that we've done so far, uh, the third one, the, the bee farm, kind of similar, but different. But uh, anyways, we're sticking to a consistent palette. That's definitely still going to happen. This time, the goal with our base is a consistent palette. So then when we're done with it, it actually looks like a finished proper base. Basically, we're going to stick pretty close to the other palette. But this time, we're going to switch it up a little bit. Make it look a little bit more, you know, different. I, I kind of get tired of doing the same exact thing over and over again. So what we're going to do is start with spruce this time. Now, uh, are we going to strip the outside uh, of these logs? I kind of can't decide. So strip spruce looks like this, right? Uh, which is very, very similar to that, which I almost feel like uh, shouldn't be the case. I, I almost think that it should look different. But uh, here's the other thing that we need to know. So uh, on the inside in here, on these walls, I'm going to do dark oak, actually. Uh, kind of basically like reversing the build palette. Uh, the dark oak with that looks really really samey. So I guess that's our answer. This stuff has to be stripped Not a doubt about it. Now. I want some height on this build so far the builds in this world have some pretty good height So I'm thinking maybe we do a build like that tall. That'll put it pretty tall like pretty good looking compared to that um, It's a weird shape on the front I think it'll work though, uh, and I'm also thinking these spruce uh, pillars in here going up on the sides to make everything look like really big and sturdy. I want the build to actually look interesting. Then uh, coming in here too, I know what I want to do for sure. We need some arches in the build, right? I, I could never just skip them, right? Not this time around at least. So if we strip all of these right here, at least going down to like there for now, maybe one more, um, we could do an arch like that and then we could come back in with a slab in the middle and I feel like that would create the perfect arch. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do about that window, so for now, we'll just clog it up. But yeah, like an arch going around this thing. Now, in these diagonal areas, uh, being real, keeping things 100% authentic, no clue what I'm going to do. <laughs> I don't really know. Um, I don't know, I could do like fences in there or something. That could work. Or I could even like pull this wall out even more and like have it fill in all the way to there. That would give us more room on the inside, but not exactly what I wanted to do. So basically... Kind of unsure. You know what we could do? Um, maybe. I don't know, okay? Okay, just hear me out here on this one. I don't know, okay? Gotta make that really clear. I don't know. So, what if... What if we were to do something like this? It would almost, like... Make it almost look like caged in a sense, right? Like like we did something like that? That would be kind of crazy. It would be really different. Don't usually build like that, but what if? What if we did that? That's kind of cool, right? And then we put like the dark oak accent like behind it, like the really, really dark wood that would kind of show through. Is that a look? <laughs> oh man, that's a good question. That's a really good question, me. Oh, but you know, I'm kind of thinking that we're gonna do that trap door trick on this wall. And this one, and this, okay, yeah, yeah, you know what? That actually might work because then we could have trap doors in the back of that spot right there, and, and it would still fit. And then we'd have this kind of like 
peek through area, if you will, maybe. And, and then this window will be really tall. It'll go like all the way up to there. Okay, hold up. Let me make some trapdoors. Okay, so uh, check this out. We did this on the starter house build, but if we put glass panes in here and we have closed trap doors, like not open, the glass panes connect. So we can do glass panes in there and have a gigantic window that looks out that way, another one over here, and another one over there. Then on this wall, we'll just kind of have it closed off and that will make this build feel a whole lot more open. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. But this time on the window, I'm thinking clear glass panes and maybe like purple ones in the center. I feel like that would be like really shocking, like really different but also really cool. So, uh, <laughs> how you doing? Yeah, uh, it's me, your boy, Waddles. I actually haven't had that much coffee today. Just like speeding through the build though. Honestly, like excited to get them ending villager. Don't know why it's all going so quick, or at least I feel like it is. Is it? Is it? Or am I imagining things? Ah, starter house, sweet starter house. I miss you, like, a lot. This vibe of this area, it's so nice. And honestly, I've kind of been getting the edge to come back in here and put like a dock here. Anyways, enough nostalgia. We are here for flowers. I thought I had roses. You know what? We'll just take these roses. That'll be perfect. And lilacs, you know what? You'll come with me. Peonies, I hate you, but you'll come with me too. Uh, bees, stay there. Stay there. You live here. You don't live at the other base. Also, just curious, uh, do we have golden apples? Yes, we have one golden apple here. Mm-hmm. So here's the whole reason we went back over to the starter house. We need purple dye. I feel like that would look really, really good in here. So let's go ahead and make, uh, of course, purple dye first. Mm -hmm. Almost forgot about that part. Purple dye, there we go. Then we need a tiny bit of purple glass. So there we go, tiny bit of purple glass. And then I need more clear glass. So uh, hold on a minute. Here's what I'm thinking. We'll take clear glass panes and, and go over here and basically go around the edge of this thing Again, with the clear, I, I think that'll look good. But then to spice it up in the middle, we'll do maybe some purple glass because this is a fancy build after all. So there we go, purple in the middle. I moved the arches down so they're in front of the window. I don't know if I like it or not, but uh, that's kind of what I'm thinking. I think that'll look cool. The purple will be like basically a nice accent from, from the outside. I also am committing to the slab look. I think that also does look really, really sweet. So I'm gonna need to get some more glass, but now it's time for the roof. The roof is gonna be really, really simple. So, uh, I'm thinking like a cone-shaped roof. That would look really, really good. So if we went out like that, on that side, and then over here, uh, and by the way, yeah, I'm looking at the arches. I might need to move them up. I need to put the roof in first to, to know for sure. But anyways, uh, we go down like that, then what would we do? Hmm, okay, well, would we go like that? I, I feel like we would go like that for the cone. Right? Like, like we'd curve it in and, and I'd repeat that on all of the sides and then I'd go up and up and up and up. Uh, hopefully it doesn't look too tall. I don't think it will because we have a really, really uh, like long base, but uh, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Now, of course, of course, of course, I'm gonna get mossy cobblestone in here as well. I'm actually gonna take a break and go get some of that. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the outside of the build. Then when we're back, I'll actually be ready to move the villager over here and we'll talk about mending villagers. Ho oh, ho oh boy, we are pretty much ready to go. Check out the build now. Okay, not a good view. Uh, check out the build from like right here. So on the inside, this is what I have. Pretty good, completely spawn proof. We have a purple bed, that's gonna be for the villager. For now, let's just drop it in right there, it doesn't really matter. And then yeah, again, completely spawn proof, did a fancy little chandelier in there. I think that's nice, it's pretty simple though. Then on the outside, let's just go ahead and go the long way. This is what we have. We have a tall building with a tall pointy roof. This roof is very, very similar to the roof that we did on the starter house. It's just a little bit bigger. I tried to kind of like attach it to these stilts right there, uh, just a tiny bit. I'm not too sure. I'm kind of thinking about maybe doing more fences, but then again, on the flat sides, uh, the fences could look excessive really, really quick. Over here, I put a purple flag on the build. I feel like that's really cool looking. It matches the purple window, the purple bed in there. So yeah, that's the build. I'm really, really happy with it. Now, let's go ahead and fetch our villager, move the villager all the way over to its forever house, and then trap the villager inside of its house. After we trap it in, it's profession time. 
So, Axolotl, 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 I have not checked on you in a long time. You better be okay. If you're not okay, I am going to be literally devastated. How are you doing? Okay, okay, golden. You're doing golden. Okay, cool. So, what we're going to do is carefully let the villager out and then take a workstation and place it right there. You should realize that I want you to work. Come on, Axolotl. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. Uh, work for me. Is it too late in the day or something? Uh, maybe it's just too far away from you. It's okay. It's not a big deal. We'll go ahead and move this a little closer. Hey, yeah, Axolotl, get back here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Curse of binding. That is trash. Okay, so we need to move Axolotl out of this hole somehow. Can I put this up here? Will you realize? <gasps> you're doing it. You're doing it. You're doing it. You're doing it. Okay, perfect. We put the boat right there, and then you, can you, please get in the boat. Perfect, perfect. Now, this is mine. Okay, okay. Now, you... Uh, can we go in the boat together? Please let me in the boat. Uh, okay, perfect. And then we can sail Axolotl right over to the water. The goal here, get Axolotl over to the tower. Now, I've actually started to prep uh, the way up over here. I built a little staircase. Hopefully, oh yeah, we're going to be able to do this easy. We have lots of time left in the day. Now, if you're moving villagers with workstations, something we talked about a little bit more in episode 21, uh, you have to be patient. You have to do it at the right time of day. You also have to put the workstation kind of close to the villager. So, can we put that up there? Will you realize that? Here you go. Get out of the boat. Get out of the boat and get on the land. Right there. Climb, climb, climb a staircase. Go. Okay, you're going to go that way. That way works too. But look at that workstation. Don't you want to work there? Maybe? Maybe? Okay, you know what? What if we put the workstation right there? Hey, 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 hey. What are you working as? No, no, you don't work over there. So this might be a little bit more tricky than I thought. This villager actually is probably seeing the other workstations in this area, which is a huge, huge problem. Yeah, look at that. You're working as a fisherman. No, disgusting. Work as a librarian. Hey, 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 get back here. Get back here. Get down off of this wall, off of the wall. You don't work as any of this. You, no, 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 you don't want that job. You want the librarian job, yes? Yes, you do want the librarian job. Okay, perfect. Now, uh, one small step, you need to go inside of the house. Come on in here. Come on in here. Come back here. No, bad. Okay, look, it's taking all of these jobs. That is a huge problem. Look, villager, simply go in the house. We're going back this way. You're not going over here. You're going to go over here, and you're going to live here, and you're going to love it. Plan number two. Well, uh, it's simple. It's a lot more intrusive. It requires a lot more block placing, but we're trapping the villager in this area until it decides to take its correct job. There you go. You can move. Yep, into the house. Okay, perfect. Now you've trapped yourself. You're never leaving this house again. We're going to put a fence gate right in here, and then to make things super secure on the outside, we're going to put an iron door. Iron doors can't be broken down by anything, so this villager is going to be super, super safe. Another thing that I like to do to keep my villagers safe is put them way, way, way up high, like in a tower. The top of the tower is usually a pretty safe place. All right, so we have lots of iron doors. That's perfect. We'll go ahead and grab those and then two buttons and then it's time for a mending villager. But before we go over to the mending villager, we want to bring our trading supplies. So whenever this villager offers a mending, we need to lock that trade in ASAP. How are we going to lock it in? Well, simple. All we need to do is take the trade once. Once we've taken that trade, that is the trade forever for that villager. So, uh, let's go ahead and put the door, like, right there this time. We'll get a staircase in a second. I'll come back for that. We'll definitely get a different colored button, too. That would look better. Here we go. Now we're inside. We'll put a button right there. This will 100% keep the villager inside of here. Villagers can't open fence gates, and if I have a double layer door, the villager can't wait by the door and accidentally get out. So, your trait is Fire Protection 3. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Let's go ahead and break this. The villager will lose its job, then we place it back down. If it's time in the day cycle, which uh, working hours are actually ending now, the villager will reclaim the job. After the villager reclaims the job, check the trades. Sweeping edge one, not the trade that I wanted. So what do we do? Simple, break the workstation, you lose the job, we place it back down. Uh, you got a new job, okay, no trade that I wanted, watch this, <laughs> break it, uh-huh, and you basically repeat that process over and over and over again, but it's nighttime, so the villager wants to sleep, and we should probably sleep too. And you know, just because why not? I mean, we have this bell. I haven't used it, but let's actually go ahead and put the bell on this building too. I feel like that's cool. I also want to come in here and put a slab there and maybe, maybe like a slab up there too. Just get a little bit of a, a little bit more stuff going on in there. But anyways, let's go ahead and go back inside of the house. So, villager, is it time for you to work again yet? 
There you go. Um, I think it is. I think the villager is trying to go see a different job. But no, take this one. What do you have? Loyalty one? Definitely not. Okay, we break that. We wait for you to lose the job, and we do it again. Now what do you have? Uh, impaling two. No. Cool, but no. Definitely not. Uh, this is the process. This is literally how you get the best villager in the game. It's just a lot of placing and a lot of breaking. If you don't have other workstations too close, the process is actually pretty easy. It's just a potentially long process. Hey, uh, mending? No, no mending. Now, it's really, really important that you have the supplies to trade on you because once the trade is available, you want to take it immediately. If you walk away and come back, the villager could actually roll its trades over. Like, for some reason, lose his job, take it back, and yep, the trade is gone. So definitely have a book and some emeralds on you. How many emeralds? Well, it kind of depends on your situation. Uh, but basically as many emeralds as possible. Now, uh, check out these discounted trades. That's because this villager was a zombie villager. So I should hopefully, uh, if I can get a good trade, only need like a handful of emeralds. The less emeralds for a mending trade, the better, because if the trade is cheaper, then obviously I can do the trade more, which is something that I absolutely love. I'd love to get mending on pretty much everything that I have other than my bow, of course, of course, never mending on a bow, but uh, mending on pretty much everything else. So here's what I'm gonna do. Hopefully I'm lucky and it doesn't take too long, but I'm gonna keep track of how many Minecraft days this process takes. Again, hopefully I'm lucky and it only takes like one day. If we get it soon, that's gonna be amazing, but I'll keep track and I'll let you know once I have mending, how many days it's taken. This day right now is going to count as day number one. Oh, okay, day number one. <laughs> day number one, we have 14 emeralds and a book for mending. Now, that's a good trade. That's a really good trade. We could take it. Or we could try and roll things over and try and get mending even cheaper, which I know we can do. I've had a mending trade for 12 emeralds before without the discount. So I hope I don't regret this, but goodbye, mending trade. Uh, hello, better mending trade. I think we could get it for like one emerald, which would be amazing. So let's get that juicy, juicy, cheap mending trade, please. Now, without the discount, that mending trade would have been really, really bad, honestly. I mean, it's a mending trade, so it's good, but it would have cost him 38 emeralds, which is absurd. 38 emeralds? There's no way. Like, look at this. Frostwalker trade? Ah, 38? Yeah, no, no way, no way. I mean, Frostwalker's really cool, but no way. And one more thing that you should know, uh, place your workstation wherever you want it to be forever, because after you get the trade, you're not going to want to break the workstation. So if you want the workstation centered on your window, like I do, make it centered on the window. If you want it in the middle of your room, do it there. But uh, think about where you're going to put your workstation forever when placing it down. <gasps> no way. No way. Day number one still. Mending. For one emerald. For one emerald in a book. Okay. Yeah. 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 I could definitely do that. Thank you, Axawaddle, you novice villager. Oh, wow. You are literally the best villager in the world. That's a beautiful mending book. For one emerald. For one emerald. Yeah. If you couldn't tell, Elite saw oh, that is amazing. And I'm excited. We're getting more books and we're buying more mending right now. How much paper do I have? I could buy like as many mending books as I need. This is huge. This is a giant move. Day number one! I really wasn't expecting that. I was getting ready to have to do this for like five, six Minecraft days. I don't, I don't, I don't even know. I don't even, this is crazy. I'm happy. This is crazy. This is literally crazy. I can't believe this is real even. Wow, Axawaddle, you are amazing. You're the best villager in the world. You're, you're literally the best. Hi. So, once we've traded with the villager, the trades are locked in. On Java Edition, this discount, I believe, should last forever. So, that sweet, sweet zombie conversion discount, yeah, that's gonna stay there and help us out big time. This is literally the best mending trade that we could get in Minecraft. I mean, you can't get cheaper than one emerald. Come on, come on, come on. Now, uh, we are definitely going to need a supply of emeralds soon, like like a better, like consistent supply, because we'll run out. We'll actually run out of emeralds before I run out of anything else, which is really, really exciting. I can't believe this. We're just going to keep buying mending books because I can. I mean, why not? I did not think I would end this episode with a, an inventory full of mending books and a villager with a brand new level. There we go. We filled up the level bar. Let's go ahead and let you get some new trades. Maybe something else good. Maybe. Knock back two. That is not good. But uh, check this out. Two emeralds now for some bookshelves or for a bookshelf. 
It's a good trade, not worth it in my opinion, but that's cool. So mending and mending, and that is gonna be it. Now, if we wanna fill up this experience bar faster, we could buy lanterns, that would be cool. Um, yeah, lanterns would be the way to go, or probably this trade too, but uh, coincidentally, I'm out of books. Look at all of this mending. <laughs> you tell me that's not beautiful. You tell me that's not beautiful. And if you tell me that, that's a lie because that is uh, about the most amazing thing possible. Now, uh, I wanna actually come back in here and do a couple more touches, a couple more details. I need a painting in there and then that small window. Then, uh, that's actually gonna be it for today's episode. Another thing to keep in mind, uh, when you're doing this whole mending hunting process, you have to do it during working hours, if I haven't said that already. If it's too late or too early in the day, the villager won't be able to work, it won't be able to switch his job over. Not that big of a deal, you just basically have to wait. Also, make sure, like triple quadruple check, that the area that you're putting your villager in is safe, like safe forever. If there's any dark spaces in there, you could come back and your villager could be gone, unfortunately. It could be, you know, taken out, so make sure it's safe. Also, remember that lightning can burn down a wooden roof. I'm just gonna put it out there. Remember that. All right, so renovation said and done. This is what we end up with. I put a small rug in the middle of the room, a table over there with a lantern, another lantern over there, but you seem to be stuck behind it, so we'll go ahead and just move that lantern. There you go, buddy. We could put the lantern maybe, I don't know, we could maybe hang it from this spot right there. That could work. I want to make sure the lighting is really, really good in here. So there we go. We have lanterns in there. The lighting is amazing everywhere, including this spot. Yep, uh, everything's good. Oh, yeah, and we have a beautiful painting of uh, somebody. Somebody. <sighs> I just need to look at this mending trade even more. This is amazing. This is the view that I was looking for. Axawaddle, you're amazing, and I'll see you later. Time for the comment of the day. Today's comment of the day is a tip. Did anyone else hear that cookies are parrots' favorite food? Not really verified, just from a few devs. I don't know. Aha, uh -huh, that's interesting, actually. I did not know that. You know what we're gonna do? We're actually gonna make a cookie and give it to our parrot today uh, to close out the episode. I feel like that would be a nice idea. The parrot definitely deserves uh, a, a treat, you know? Uh-huh, uh, definitely a treat. Um, yeah, probably. Oh no, I accidentally backed out of the crafting table before crafting the cookies. I guess we'll do it next time. Today, big shout out to my patrons, Cypher1158, Vincent F, and Felms215. I'd also like to send a big shout out to Axel Waddle for being an amazing villager. Thanks for watching, Elites. Until next time, mending forever.